Good afternoon, everyone. Deeply tangled supply chains mean prices up. At this point, for at least another year, McDonald's runs out of milkshakes. I thought they had their own supply chains. Cisco, largest U.S. food distributor, can't keep shelves stocked. Volume of orders exceeds the capacity. Where's the breakdown? Where's the overordering coming from? California shuts. Second largest hydro plant. First time ever, Orville. White House, uh, they missed the inflation by 50%. And you can see why South Carolina is now the fourth state to recognize gold and silver as legal tender. And so should you. It's going to be your lifeline. New studies show that by the time people reach their middle ages, the body often produces less than half of the collagen it did in their youth. Collagen is the main building block in our skin, making up 70 to 80 percent of it. This is why we get sagging skin and wrinkles as we age. If you want to look younger, you must supplement collagen, which will improve your skin's elasticity, make it smoother, more plump, and more youthful looking. That's why Ageless Multi-Collagen provides five key types of collagen you need from four different sources, essential to optimally support an array of full-body benefits. No odor, no taste, no clumping, unlike other collagen supplements. And this is why I recommend health with adapt2030.com Ageless Multi-Collagen, a quick way for youthful appearance. Use the link in the description box below for 51% off my favorite Ageless Multicollagen. And now on with the video. And starting up here, DHL warning global supply chain disruptions are going to persist into next year and next year and the next, next, and the next, next year. This is a drip feed. If you can't see, it's going to be continuous until total control is over the food supply on the planet. Perhaps you need to put away those rose-colored glasses and switch to a different wavelength. So professionally written, container ships and trucking companies that move wholesale goods worldwide remain deeply tangled. So what is truly causing the snarling of the supply chains? Not enough drivers? That's the excuse given. Never-ending price increases? Now companies can charge whatever they want and just pass it along to you. Sounds like a wealth transfer to me into corporate coffers. We do not expect freight rates to stabilize in the near term. Thanks, DHL. At least you're telling us your prices are going to continue to rise into the stratosphere. Combination of disruptions, lack of containers. Again, where have all the containers gone across the planet? Oh, they've been packed up and stored underground for continuity of government. I forgot. Shortage of vessels, well, yeah, if you're going to take 25 to 30 percent of the world's fleets to deliver specifically for governments for continuity of government, that's going to create shortages elsewhere. And the cargo demand exceeds available capacity. Where is all the extra ordering coming from? Oh, government's ordering for continuity of government. What's on the horizon? Grand solar minimum, massive wipeout in global crop yields is what's on the horizon. Container prices top shipping routes, highest ever, and it's probably a discount by the end of next year. Moving over to Cisco, the largest U.S. food distributor, having trouble keeping shelves stocked. Price shock imminent. So Cisco comes out publicly and says we anticipate additional supplier challenges. Okay, have they not, after a year, figured out how to restabilize their supply chains? Oh, I forgot. People just can't go to work, can they? Not enough drivers. But don't worry. These doubling and tripling food prices, that's going to go right into corporate hands. So don't worry. Another wealth transfer. If you can't see, this is the MO by now. 2.0. You had time to prepare. You knew this was coming last year. Here we are, 2.0. I hope you got ready. And I said that in a couple videos ago, but I really mean I hope you got ready. This one's the real one. The volume of orders is regularly exceeding our capacity. And we dovetail back into the same. Who is over-ordering and stretching every single factory, shipper, and supplier? 
It can only be government's ordering for continuity of government only. There's not that many people working anymore that are demanding this many goods. It's led to service disruptions for some of our customers, meaning empty shelves. That's translated into English. Empty shelves and you not getting it. I don't care how much money you have. Empty shelves. And a nice translation here that was in the article from Zero Hedge. It's about to get bad as a double whammy of insufficient workers, snarled supply chains, and I would add in governments preparing their own massive ordering for continuity of government, leading to shortages of perishables, long-term storable foods, and anything else you want to put on the list, repair parts. Logically, prices are going to go higher. And also, a lot of key things in your life are going to be unavailable. So McDonald's, we all know, they're vertically integrated. They have their own supply chains. They have their own fleets of delivery vehicles. They have their own cattle ranches. So McDonald's running out of milkshakes amid supply chain issues. Milkshakes, at least in England, Scotland, and Wales, are unavailable temporarily. Again, we kept hearing all these temporary things. I have heard temporary this, temporary that since when? Early 2020. Three weeks to get flat, and here we still are, and everything's still temporary, and everything's still unavailable, and it's getting worse and more constricted and tighter, and even more things are breaking down. But then is McDonald's running out of key ingredients, which is a shocker. How can they run out of ingredients, McDonald's? This is the biggest, I can't believe it moment. Nando's was forced to close about 50 restaurants. Chicken shortages, well, that's been ongoing along with poultry and beef. They're blaming it on lorry drivers or truck drivers. KFC also had issues with chicken. But as far as I know, the same thing. KFC is vertically integrated. They own the very farms that produce the chicken, and they own the farms that grow the feed for the chicken, and they have their own, with yum, delivery fleets. So how are they coming into shortages? A lot of things are not making sense anymore. And then jumping over to California, I was focused on this because of the water shortages there affecting so much agriculture. And you're going to see a lot of veg not delivered into your stores. A lot of fruits are not going to make it in this season because California is in a mega drought and they grow 25% of the nation's produce. That was where my focus was. And then all of a sudden... Orville Dam pops up in the limelight again. Overtopping Dam a couple years back, and now the first time ever deactivated second largest hydroelectric power plant. So if you need a factory to process foods, packed foods, or such, this is not going to happen. And the mega drought seems to be about the money. But actually, you're shrinking money. The hyperinflation inbound allows you to buy 50% as much as you did last year. So if it continues to that trend by next year, you're going to be looking at just 25% purchase power of what you had this year. And lo and behold, the White House more than doubles its inflation forecast. Oops, sorry, we got it wrong. And their inflation forecast, I don't know if anybody's been to the supermarket from the White House, but 3 or 4%, please. They actually say 4.8% from the office of management and budget. But if you've been down any aisle in any supermarket in the last, say, three months, 4.8% is a discount bargain basement deal. People that made these forecasts need to be replaced with some actual persons who have eyes that can read numbers. And CNBC kind of sums it up so perfectly here. The key inflation gauge rising 3.6% or now from the White House, 4.8%, biggest since 1990. But in the video that they were showing, personal income is up 1.1%. Yes, we are keeping up with inflation as an individual. What is that? Inflation rising 4x more than your wages are. You can see why populations are being manhandled right now. This grand solar minimum intensification wiping out crop yields globally, bad this year, tumultuous next year, civilization shattering 2023. 
So it's all about the food. The food is going to be the pivot point of everything else happening across the planet. Now, if you're going to talk about runaway inflation and dollars buying less, precious metals right here, South Carolina Legal Tender Act, creating and treating gold and silver as money. And I was interested in how many states are actually doing this. because This is the future. Four states so far have set laws that recognize gold and silver as legal tender. Utah, Wyoming, Oklahoma, and now South Carolina. Which means as an exit strategy, if you have a bunch of precious metals and you want to get out of it and the banks won't cash in and you can't find a dealer to take it, you could drive to one of these four states and since it's legal tender, anybody would cash you out back into the fiat, which you can then run back and then pay off your loan in the house. Or so I was told. Not financial advice, just saying. But one thing that we are going to need to consider is food. Societies crumble when there's not enough food. Do you have long-term storable foods? The three-month emergency food supply, my Patriot Supply and Adapt 2030, 25-year shelf life, give yourself the peace of mind knowing you have storable foods, and it's going to cost far less this year than it will next year. Those are two reasons right there to purchase. Plus, it helps keep this channel, Adapt 2030, up and running to bring you more information just like this. I appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Learn how to grow food, buy seeds, and get your food stocks ready. Things are starting to implode right now.